Did you know the foundations of classical mechanics are deeply connected to how some modern AI systems learn and optimize their choices? Newton's laws were formulated to describe the motion of objects, yet they have evolved into the mathematical foundations of reinforcement learning that now power some of the most advanced AI systems, including the recently released DeepSeq R1 large language model. How did we get here? How did a framework built for predicting the motion of falling apples lead to machines that play strategic games better than humans, such as AlphaGo, developed by Google's DeepMind Technologies? In this video, we'll take an extraordinary journey, from Newton's laws to the Bellman equation that powers AI's reinforcement learning. Newton's laws were designed to describe physical motion, not decision-making. So, how did they end up shaping the way AI learns and makes choices? To answer this, we need to look at how physicists reformulated Newton's laws over time. Instead of focusing on forces and accelerations as in Newton's original version, they developed equivalent formalisms based on the energy of the system. For example, in Hamiltonian formalism, a system is described in terms of its energy. A formalism like this has a much wider application than just explaining the motions of objects. For example, since electromagnetic waves also have energy, they can be explained within the Hamiltonian formalism. Another equivalent formalism of Newton's laws that is particularly relevant to the subject of this video is the Hamilton-Jacobi formalism, which works in terms of optimal paths. It turns out that nature tends to find optimal paths for the evolution of its systems. For example, a particle chooses the shortest path to travel between two points. But this formalism goes far beyond Newtonian mechanics. All the fundamental forces of nature, like Einstein's theory of gravity or Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, fit into this formalism. And this is where things start to resemble decision-making. Think of it like planning a road trip. You have multiple possible routes, but you want to choose the one that minimizes your travel time or fuel consumption. This process of finding the most efficient path is at the core of Hamilton-Jacobi formalism, and it's also the foundation of reinforcement learning in AI systems. But what is exactly Hamilton-Jacobi formalism? How do we start from that and derive the Bellman equation that powers AI's reinforcement learning? How do Markov chains fit into all of this? Why is reinforcement learning used to train a large language model like DeepSeq R1 or a game machine such as Google's AlphaGo? The answers lie ahead. Let's break it down. To understand how physics connects to AI's reinforcement learning, let's start with a fundamental concept in classical mechanics, the Lagrangian. In classical mechanics, the Lagrangian is defined as the difference between kinetic and potential energy. In AI's reinforcement learning, the Lagrangian can be interpreted as the instantaneous cost of deciding the next step at a given time and state. Now, from the Lagrangian, we define something called the action potential, which is the time integral over the Lagrangian. It is interesting to note that almost all the fundamental equations of physics come out of minimizing this equation. That means, in every phenomenon, nature seems to prefer the optimal path that takes the least action, or, in other words, the least time accumulation of the costs. In reinforcement learning, this equation takes on a new interpretation. It represents the total cost associated with following a particular path or making a sequence of decisions. The Hamilton-Jacobi formalism of Newton's laws of motion can be written in terms of the following differential equation, a powerful formulation that describes how the action evolves over time. In this equation, the vector Q represents the state of the system. For example, in classical mechanics, it refers to the position of a particle. In electromagnetism, it refers to the magnitude of electromagnetic fields. In machine learning, it refers to the features of the system, or, simply speaking, the columns of the spreadsheet. We will get back to this equation later in the video. For now, let's discuss how this equation can take us one step closer to reinforcement learning. For that, let's add another concept and slightly deviate from classical mechanics. Imagine a car's engine. We can design a system that controls the amount of fuel that is delivered to the engine. This will give us control over the system. Therefore, we can minimize the cost by optimizing the fuel delivery system. 
This concept is how Richard Bellman extended the Hamilton-Jacobi formalism of classical mechanics into a wider version called Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman. To see how this transition happens, let's get back to the Hamilton-Jacobi formalism of classical mechanics that we discussed earlier. Now, remember the example of the car engine and fuel delivery system that we discussed before. Let's take the fuel delivery as an external input to the system and refer to it by variable u. That means we need to add this new variable to the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. For that, we just need to appreciate the dependence of the Lagrangian, or in this case, the instantaneous cost, on the new variable u and rewrite the action, or in this case, the accumulated cost, as the form of this equation is as in classical mechanics, with the difference that both sides depend on the control input u. Let's now push things one step further toward reinforcement learning and define the value function as the optimal cost. One difference between the Hamilton-Jacobi formalism of classical mechanics and the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman formalism of optimal control theory is to replace the action potential S with this value function and rewrite the differential equation in the following form. To move another step toward reinforcement learning, we need to discretize the time derivative on the left-hand side of the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation and then multiply both sides by the time interval, delta t. Before I move forward, let me mention that this equation has a Markovian nature because the state of the value function at the next time step depends only on its current state and not on its history. Now, let's move the value function at the next time step to the right and multiply both sides by a minus 1. Let's now clarify a few points about this equation. The vector q in this equation is still evaluated at the previous time step. That means we can use the Taylor expansion of the value function to absorb the two terms into one. Also, at this point, we define the reward in the following form. Adding these two pieces back into the discretized version of the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation, we arrive at what is called the recursive Bellman equation. At this point, we are only one step away from reinforcement learning. This equation has a deterministic nature and makes the basis of the optimal control theory. But in machine learning, events are probabilistic. That means that to fill the gap, we need to view each term of this equation as a probability distribution of the corresponding term in the deterministic system. For example, the reward R should be viewed as the probability of having the reward. Also, since the left-hand side must still be deterministic, we replace the right-hand side with its expectation value. As you might have noticed, we added a few extra variables like the pi on the top of the value function, the gamma before the value function on the right-hand side, and also the variable s. Let's see what each of these are. In a reinforcement learning system, the decision-making entity is called an agent. It interacts with the environment by taking actions and receiving rewards. Before I get into the more general case, let's see what these fundamental reinforcement learning concepts look like in the game of tic-tac-toe. The agent is the player, either X or O, that makes decisions on where to place their mark on the board. A state represents the current configuration of the tic-tac-toe board. Each state is defined by the placement of X's, O's, and empty spaces. There are many possible states, ranging from an empty board at the start to a completed game. The agent receives a reward based on the outcome of the game. A win provides a positive reward, a loss results in a negative reward, and a draw may give a neutral reward. Intermediate states may also have smaller rewards depending on the learning algorithm used. The environment consists of the game board and the rules that govern how the game is played. It updates the state based on the agent's actions and determines whether the game has ended or should continue. By interacting with the environment, the agent learns to improve its decision-making strategy over time, optimizing its moves to maximize the expected reward. Now that we have an idea of the concepts in a simple example, let's get back to the Bellman equation and discuss the terms in general. The policy pi is a probability function that determines the agent's actions in a given state. In other words, the policy in reinforcement learning defines the likelihood of selecting different actions when in a particular state. Gamma is called the discount rate. It determines how much future rewards contribute to the present value. It is a fixed hyperparameter that ranges between 0 and 1. 
If we set it close to 1, the second term in the Bellman equation will receive a higher weight, which means future rewards will be more important than the instant reward represented by the first term R. It should be noted that we can always absorb the gamma parameter into the value function by redefining it to be consistent with how the value function appeared in the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. Let's now move one step further and explicitly compute the expectation value in the Bellman equation where the term P represents the transition probability. It denotes the probability of transitioning to state S prime given that the agent is in the state S and takes action A. This function models the dynamics of the environment, dictating how likely it is to move from one state to another under a given action. Finally, let me walk you through how this last equation can be used practically. One implementation of this involves value iteration, where we iteratively update the value function until it converges. For this purpose, we first give an arbitrary value to all the possible states of the value function v. For example, put all the values to zero. Assuming that the rules of the system are known, everything on the right-hand side has a value to start with. Next, for each state s, we calculate the new value using the Bellman equation. This involves summing over future states s prime for a given action a, and for each compute the right-hand side of the equation. The action for which the sum over states is maximum will be our choice for the updated value function. We will continue this process until the value function updates become negligibly small. The iterative algorithm that was just discussed is called the dynamic programming method and works well only if the state space is small. In almost all the serious applications of reinforcement learning, the number of possible states is so large that the presented dynamic programming method is impractical. But it is a great starting point to learn the fundamental concepts before getting into the details of more complicated approaches. We have implemented the tic-tac-toe example of this video. We also have suggested some possible changes that you can apply as a practice in case you want to add it as a sample project to your GitHub and improve your online presence. Okay, now I'm going to enumerate the other methods of reinforcement learning. Dynamic programming, Monte Carlo methods, and temporal difference learning are the three core approaches for solving finite Markov decision problems in reinforcement learning, each with unique advantages and limitations. Dynamic programming is mathematically rigorous and guarantees precise solutions, but depends on a complete and accurate model of the environment, which is often impractical in real-world scenarios. Monte Carlo methods, on the other hand, bypass the need for a model and learn directly from sampled experiences, making them conceptually simple. However, they require complete episodes for updates making them unsuitable for step-by-step -step incremental learning. Temporal difference learning bridges the gap by being both model-free and fully incremental, allowing continuous updates during learning. However, it introduces additional complexity. We will make more videos on reinforcement learning in future. Stay tuned if you are interested. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.